Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you watching through live stream, and we pray that you are in good health. Our presider this morning is Archbishop Hunt, and our entrance hymn is Lord, You Search Me and You Know Me, number 474 in the Catholic Book of Worship. you search me and you know me when I rest or when I rise all my thoughts you clearly follow keep my deeds before your eyes all my journeys you have measured long before I hear you speak you surround me your wisdom while your guiding hand is near. High and lofty is your knowledge, far too wonderful for me. In all worlds I find your presence, from your sight I cannot flee. If I fly above the heavens, Lord, I find you near to me. If I seek the nether shadows in your presence, I will be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. That we may worthily enter into this celebration, we pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. After the Lord God had finished giving the tablets of the covenant to Moses on Mount Sinai, the Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them, and they have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, 
so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with, with great power and with mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and you shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number 105. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. The Lord will to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered, O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever. The covenant that he made with Abraham to Israel as an everlasting covenant. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. He remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant that they might keep his statutes and observe his law. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of 
Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jewish leaders were seeking to kill Jesus because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but also calling God his own Father, thereby making himself equal to God. Jesus said to them, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 106, uh, reflecting on our first reading today of the Israelites turning away from God and making an idol that they worship, says, they exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. Uh, Interesting way of putting it. And, And one that makes it look very silly what they've done that they have exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. And yet, when you look at human nature, um, it's sort of, for me anyway, easy to understand where those Israelites are coming from. They're looking for a God that they can control. Uh, They're looking for stability. They're looking for black and white. They're looking for things to be in a way that they can understand and that they can control. And, and that's part of our human condition. We, we want to understand. We, we want to be in control. Uh, we find it difficult to deal with complexity or with uncertainties. And that's what the Israelites were having to do uh, as Moses the prophet led them through the desert. They didn't know when, where they were going or when they would get there. 
they had to trust the Lord not only to lead them, but also to provide them with food. And so that they would make a God that they could control, uh, that they could put down in a place and he'd be there, that they could go to and say, okay, this is what we want. Um, it's understandable. It's not right, and, and it is silly in its own way, but it's understandable. And we see the same thing with the leaders of the Jewish people in today's gospel passage. They don't like Jesus because he's breaking their rules. And they don't want to step back far enough to look at the big picture and to say, well, hold it now. Given the works that he's doing, those works can only be done if he does have the power of God. They, they don't want to take that broad approach. They, <clears throat> they want things to be stable. They want things to fit according to the form that they feel is right. I think today's readings challenge you and I to say in what ways maybe in our lives have we exchanged the God of glory for the image of an ox that eats grass? Uh, how have we maybe decided or maybe unconsciously that it's too difficult to be open to God and, and his ongoing demands in our lives or the uncertainty that comes from letting God be in charge. And so we've set up things that we can control, even like the Jewish leaders, our own faith. But we've decided how that faith ought to be lived and nobody better tell us any different. As we continue in the Mass, let us ask the Lord to help us to have that first beatitude of St. Matthew's, that poverty of spirit that allows us to be open that allows us to trust. And maybe that serenity prayer is a prayer, that, a prayer that is fitting for today in terms of asking the Lord to help us to have the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the wisdom, or the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference, the wisdom to allow God to be God in our lives so that his glory may be in us and we may rejoice in the gift of his presence amidst the complexity and at times the puzzlement that his ways cause us to feel. Trusting, trusting as Moses did, that the Lord is in charge. And if we will listen to him and follow him, he will show us the way and we will have a fruitfulness and a peace that the world cannot give. God bless you. With confidence in God's power and goodness, we offer to him our prayers of petition. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders that they may be open to God and his guidance in the role that they are called to in leadership in our world and that they may have the wisdom and courage they need to lead well. For this we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith that having received so great a gift, we may cherish it and with trust open ourselves to God and his guidance in our lives. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who struggle today with an obstinacy in wanting things their own way, that they may have the grace they need to open themselves to God and his guidance. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, the oppressed, for all those who are dealing with any type of hardship or pain today. For God's healing grace for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you today, both those prayers we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Cyril of Jerusalem, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who Who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our our daily daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is Our Daily Bread, number 600 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Father, merciful and gracious, give us now our daily bread. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, Mary, you you always always shine in our path as a sign sign of of salvation and of hope. We entrust entrust ourselves to you, health of the the sick, who at the cross took took part in Jesus' pain, keeping keeping your faith faith firm. You, salvation salvation of your people, people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. 
Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. And with you. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 644 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Sure. 